Hey there, once again, YouTube. I got a few things to bring to you today. Uh, first off, my website. I Some of you might have noticed that the address has changed. Instead of monitorsize.weebly.com, it is now www.monitorsize.net. I uh, just bought my own domain and subscribed to Weebly, so I have a lot more possibilities on there. Also, under the More drop-down menu, under Videos and Multimedia, there is a page called My Videos. Most of my videos that I'm going to upload to YouTube, I will put on there, independent of YouTube. Beforehand, if I was going to put a video on Weebly, I would have to upload it to YouTube and then put it on my website, right? Well, now that I subscribe, they have their own HD video thing on, <laughs> on there. So I can pretty much upload my own videos to Weebly as much as I want now without having to deal through YouTube. So that's a great alternative just in case, I don't know, YouTube has been acting crazy with conservatives and everybody knows I'm a conservative, so. <laughs> I don't think they'd ever take me down though because I really don't talk about politics much. Uh, but we all know that YouTube and Facebook and a lot of places like that are starting to crack down on free speech and stuff like that. But not to get into that right now. We got multiple events I want to talk about in this video. First off, it's 11.46 uh, a.m. Pacific time, June 1st. 2019. Happy June, my people. Um, I am actually working on my monthly update. It will be up probably by June 4th. June 4th or June 5th, my monthly update for May will be out, so keep an eye out for that. Again, changes are occurring on my website. I'm still updating multiple pages. I am adding two new pages as well. Um, the old link, the monitorsize.weebly.com, that will still work. So if you still type that in, it'll still bring you to the the new address. So you really don't have to bookmark the new address if you don't want to, but it's monitorsize.net now. But we have an earthquake I want to talk about just real quick in Washington State at 24.3 kilometers in depth of to 2.6 struck. Let's see. Doo -doo 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 -doo. I'm going to say probably about 20 minutes ago, just about 20 minutes ago as of me writing this. I did not feel this earthquake. There are multiple people around this area that reported feeling it. I live in this area right here. I did not feel it. But then again, I was playing a video game. Yes, guys, I do play video games every once in a while when I have free time and there's nothing to do. So usually in the morning, I just take like 20, 30 minutes just to relax. Yeah, um, shooter games is my way to relax. <laughs> the Division 2 is my favorite, by the way. But I rarely have time for that stuff anymore. But we got a 2.6 at 24.3 kilometers in depth. I did not feel it. Again, I live in this location, but multiple people around this area down here did feel it. I believe five or six reports came in. Uh, let's see. I'm going to show you this in the Seismic Program Swarm, and then we'll get to the other stuff that I want to talk about in this video. So, And remember, if you if this video is too long for you, just go to the parts section below where I section out everything. So just go check that out right now if you want to skip to a certain part that interests you. Here we are in the Seismic Program Swarm with station uh, the most recent data stream from the station GNW in the UW Network Broadband Vertical. No location code is given. This is the closest seismic station to this earthquake right here, the magnitude 2.6. And they say it occurred, where was it? They say it occurred at 24.3 kilometers in depth. So, this is it and looks like a normal tectonic event. But it looks a little strange. So, uh, some of the lower frequencies of this earthquake are much weaker than the higher frequencies. Usually we see very strong lower frequencies with any earthquake. And it usually goes up from there. But, you know, it can vary. But we see some very high frequencies. Look at this, guys. Look at that. That Talk about those high frequencies. I mean, that is a very strange looking earthquake, in my opinion. Very, very odd. Let's go to the maximum frequency range of 55 on the spectrogram. Oh, only goes up to 50. Never mind. And there it is right there. Yep, some pretty high frequency. So a 2.6 just struck Washington State. Multiple people reported feeling it, but I did not, even though I live just 20 miles northeast of Seattle. There it is right there. Let's check out the dominant frequencies just real quick. Yep. All right. High frequency earthquake. Going all the way up to 50 hertz. There we go. So let's move on to the other event I want to talk about in this video, which is this event right here, the magnitude 2.6 at 5 kilometers in depth in New York. And then they had three subsequent aftershocks, a negative 0.1, negative 0.2, and then a 0.2, all at 5 kilometers in depth, which makes me think that they do not know the exact depths of these events because it's very rare to have four earthquakes in a row all at the same exact depth, like 100% the same exact depth. I mean, yeah, I bet that could happen in some cases, but, you know, I, I bet these might be a little more shallow, more, a little more deeper. Don't know that for sure, though. But let's go to the event page of the magnitude 2.6 at 5 kilometers in depth, just real quick. 
Again, there are three subsequent aftershocks and 33 people reported feeling this event in northern New York. Right along the border of Canada, guys. Right around the epicenter, but a few people did feel it farther to the south. Now, let's look at recent seismicity for this area since January 1st, 2018. Almost a year and a half worth of seismicity. So, for this entire area, seismicity is somewhat rare somewhat i mean we do see some multiple quakes actually popping off in this area down here there are actually two down here magnitude 2.6 was the most recent largest uh let's see 2.6 2.2 the other large large ish one for this area a 2.6 is pretty large i mean they rarely get actual large magnitude earthquakes 2.2 10.4 kilometers in depth far to the north on november 25th 2018 then they had a 2.0 in Norfolk, New York, excuse me. 2.0 12.3 kilometers in depth in August of last year. Then they had a 2.3 at 18 point, uh, was that? 18.0 kilometers in depth, yep. Let's see, is there anything that's larger? Yes, there is. There is one thing that is larger. Boom, the 2.7 at 5 kilometers in depth on March 21st, 2018. So this area has seen a little bit of seismicity before. I don't know why i think it is very strange on the same day as that 2.7 last year there was a 1.9 a little bit more shallow at four kilometers in depth just to the what is that northwest the north northwest so very interesting so it's not the largest to occur since january 1st 2018 but it is the second largest and earthquakes are somewhat rare out here so it is noteworthy to see an earthquake in new york it is somewhat noteworthy, guys. Excuse me. Let's go to the 2.6 at 5 kilometers in depth just real fast. Go to the event page. Again, 33 people reported feeling it. Let's see what the closest seismic station was. Let's see. Arrival time. Loney. U.S. Loney Baloney. All right. I'll use Loney for the seismic program swarm. Here we are in the seismic program swarm to look at the magnitude 2.6 New York earthquake that struck northern New York near the border of Canada and New York. Uh, let's see here. Here it is right here. Let's look at the end tail real quick. Oh, whoops. My bad. I'm going to add a 1 hertz high pass filter to the 8 power since it's a broadband station. There we go. Let's zoom in. There's some very high frequencies right there. Very strong S waves, guys. Very, very strong. And look at this, almost looks like some type of underground explosion. At first, they were reporting it at zero kilometers in depth, which is sea level. So I thought, hmm, this looks like an explosion. Maybe this was some type of big explosion in New York. Kind of scared me a little bit at first, maybe even a meteor air burst. But they are now reporting it at five kilometers in depth. It definitely was an earthquake. Definitely was an earthquake. Very interesting high frequencies, though. I do not know why the frequencies are so high and so strong right in this location, right when the S wave hits. Let's see if we can... Let's see right around there. Let's do... 50,000. 50,000. Manual scale. Press OK. Yep, there it is. The magnitude 2.6 at 5 kilometers in depth in New York. Real quick, I want to zoom out now. They said there were some aftershocks, some very teeny tiny aftershocks, a negative 0 0.1, negative 0 0.2, and 0 0.2. Let's see, 2334, and then 237, 239 of the next day. Okay, 234, or excuse me, 2334, I believe that's what it said. 2334, which would be right about here. Ah, oh, here's the negative 0 0.1 right here. Whoops. Press auto scale. There it is right there. Almost looks just like the magnitude 2.6. And then the aftershocks. The other two aftershocks, 237 and 239. So let's go down to 237. Excuse me. Sorry if this is taking too long, guys. 237. Right about here. Okay, so here they are right here. Here's the negative 0.2 right here. Again, looks just like the magnitude 2.6, the original earthquake, the main shock. And here's the magnitude 0 0.2 aftershock. And then after that, let's see if any more occurred. Not seeing much, guys. Not seeing much. Nope. 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 Maybe a little one here and there, but that's pretty much it. So why do you think the earthquake in New York happened, guys? Very interesting looking earthquake. Now, let's move on to the Kansas earthquake. All right, here we are the past seven days, all magnitudes on earthquake.usgs.gov, and we do see there were some microquake swarms along the New Madrid fault zone. 
Um, and the whole state of Oklahoma, I found this very intriguing. The entire state of Oklahoma was swarming, but not that big. I think the largest, what was the largest of this event? I think the largest was a 3.1. And only a few people felt it very weak. But the thing is, it's very interesting seeing the seismicity occur in such a concentrated area. I mean, look at this. The 29th was just, what, three days ago? This is the past seven days. So really... All of this seismicity basically occurred in the past three days, all in this location. Usually it's concentrated in a certain location, but it's actually pretty much the whole center of Oklahoma that was swarming. Very interesting. And Kansas got hit by 3.6 at 5 kilometers in depth. Let's see here. 17 people reported feeling it. Doesn't look like shaking was too strong, of course, because it's a 3.6. 5 kilometers in depth on May 31st, 2019 at 2344 UTC. Here we are in the seismic program swarm with station CBKS in the U.S. network, 00 location code broadband vertical. This is the closest seismic station to the magnitude 3.6 at 5 kilometers in depth in Kansas. Here it is right here. Some interesting lower frequencies along the S wave, but that could be normal. This looks like a normal Kansas earthquake. A lot of the earthquakes around this area look like this. It's very strange. Um, uh, let's see, let me know if there are any fracking operations in this area. I bet you there are. I mean, there's a lot of fracking everywhere. But really, if you think about it, fracking and natural gas, what else are we going to do? I mean, I understand it can cause earthquakes. But what other energy possibilities are there, really? I mean, solar power cannot power a whole nation the size of ours. So that's pretty much out of the question. Maybe wind and solar power combined. But can you imagine the amount of money that would have to go into that? Uh, hey, at least it would create some jobs, you know, but, and again, could be a fracking earthquake, do not know for sure. Here's the magnitude 3.6 at 5 kilometers in depth for Kansas. Let's check out the dominant frequencies of most of the earthquake real quick. Some dominant lower frequencies between 2 hertz and 3.2 hertz, but we do see some strong frequencies going well beyond, beyond that. It's not a low frequency earthquake by any standard, but still, it had some somewhat dominant lower frequencies. And you could definitely see that right here. And we also had some very interesting earthquakes uh, just east of the boot of Italy in Albania, along the border of Albania and Greece. Isn't that very odd? An earthquake swarm of magnitude 5.2, 4.9, 4.8, 5.0, 5 and a 4.4. They reportedly are all at 10 kilometers in depth. That may be questionable, but they did constrain the depth at 9.6 kilometers for the magnitude 5.0. And the only one, let's see, the 5.2 was felt, and the 5.0 was felt. The three magnitude 4s, the high magnitude 4s, were not felt at all. And I think this is very, very intriguing why even an earthquake swarm would even occur in this place to begin with, especially one like this. And here is since January 1st, 2018, through right now, 12.07 p.m. Pacific Time, June 1st, 2019. Only 70 earthquakes have been reported since January 1st, 2018, almost a year and a half ago. Let's see, we see the earthquakes today on June 1st. Let's see, on the 25th, there was one as well. On the 23rd uh, of, uh, let's see, it was that April? Yeah. March saw one earthquake. February saw one earthquake. Let's see. It doesn't look like any of these earthquakes really were on the same exact day. So really, ever since January 1st, 2018, maybe even prior to that, this is the most concentrated seismicity that this area has seen. Very intriguing, definitely. Right in, I don't know, Corse? Corse? Please let me know if I'm saying that wrong. Uh, you know how bad I am at pronouncing things. But right along the border of Greece and Albania. So why don't we go take a look at the seismic data for these earthquakes. And by the way, guys, I am going to take the seismic data from this station right here in the MN network TIR, which according to USGS in the arrival times of the earthquakes saw this earthquake arrive first. It is in the INGV database, which is extremely, extremely hard to get seismic data from. But nonetheless, excuse me, we are going to take data from it and check it out in the seismic program swarm. All right, so here we have station TIR in the MN network from the INGV data center. Broadband vertical, no location code given. We see many, many earthquakes here, and I want to let you guys know this is broadband vertical station, or channel, excuse me. So I'm going to do one hertz high pass filter to the eighth power to block out all the background micro -seasms. So we can just take a look at the earthquakes and background tremor, if there is any, themselves. Now... As you will notice with the spectrogram, it only goes to 10 hertz. For some reason, the station only detects frequencies up to 10 hertz, and that's it, sadly. 
All right, here we go. Look at all these earthquakes, guys. Look at that. And yes, these are all earthquakes. Strong earthquakes, too. Whoever's living in this area is going to be shaking around quite a bit. Another aftershock right there. Then we have another one right here. Let's see, at 7 UTC, that was the... At 7 UTC... Do, 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 do. That was the 5.0 and 9.6 kilometers in depth that some people did report feeling. Again, very concentrated space right down here, guys. Very concentrated, very strange. A lot of earthquakes. I'm not really seeing any background tremor between 1 hertz and 5 hertz, which is a good thing. I was wondering if this was volcanic in nature. Does not look like it right now, but then again, you never know. Low frequency background tremor is not always required if something's something volcanic's going on underground. So usually it is. Usually low frequency background tremor does occur, like harmonic volcanic tremor. A lot of the time it does, but I have seen it occur. Or excuse me, I have seen volcanic eruptions occur without harmonic or volcanic tremor of the low frequency background variety. If you know what I'm talking about. Let's see. As of the most recent data stream, as of 12.14 p.m. Pacific Time, June 1st, 2019, we see many, many earthquakes, very rhythmic. And look at how rhythmic they are, guys. You see that? They aren't completely rhythmic, though. They're not 100% completely rhythmic, but it is very interesting. It very, very, very interesting. I do not know what could be, even be causing these earthquakes at all. Let's zoom in on the most recent one. They have not reported any for a while, but we can obviously see that these are earthquakes, clear P and S wave arrivals. A couple local earthquakes, local to the seismic station in question. Very intriguing, guys. Very intriguing. So what do you think is causing the earthquake swarm on the border of Albania and Greece? And yes, guys, this is considered a swarm, a large magnitude swarm. Large magnitude swarm. So I will continue to keep an eye on this. I will monitor the station TIR and the MN network just to see where this is headed. But you can see all of these are earthquakes. I thought some of this was going to be surface noise. It's not. This is not surface activity. These are earthquakes. So again... Earthquake swarm is occurring in Albania. Pretty, pretty strong one. Keep an eye on it. But let's move on to the last thing in this video. More spasmodic tremor events have just been spotted in Hawaii last night. Here we are in Hawaii past 24 hours as of 12.15 p.m. Pacific Time, June 1st, 2019. Um, all magnitudes as well. For starters, we do have a magnitude 2.6 at 7.8 kilometers in depth in a very strange location far to the northwest of the Big Island of Hawaii. Um, very interesting though, very interesting. There were three earthquakes that hit Mauna Loa in the past 24 hours, nothing too, too crazy, kind of shallow. A few other earthquakes along Kilauea and just to the southeast, but that's not what I wanna focus on. Look at, we have some swarming down here near Pahala, Hawaii. Now for those who follow my work and follow my videos, notice Pahala, Pahala, Pahala. For you who watch my videos and my work, you guys know to watch out for earthquakes that are reported near Pahala, Hawaii, specifically in this location right here, right where I'm circling with my mouse. If you see anything that occurs between 20 kilometers to 55 kilometers in depth, I used to say 50 kilometers, but I have, there was one a few months ago that was at 53 kilometers in depth, very, very deep, right within the mantle. Again, these are being reported as earthquakes. They are not. Sometimes USGS reports them as earthquakes, Sometimes USGS reports them as, quote-unquote, other event. So I don't know the the category. I don't know why they call them other events sometimes, and other times they call them just regular earthquakes. Because if you look, and we'll look at the seismic data in a second, these are not just regular earthquakes. I think a couple of them are. A couple of them are regular earthquakes. But a lot of these are the spasmodic tremor events that I used to call deep, long-period, high-frequency events, DLPHFEs. I do not call it that anymore because I like to call it... I like to call everything by its true, rightful name, which is spasmodic tremor for these events down here. Notice, just of the past hour, we have another one, 2.5 striking at 40.7 kilometers in depth. Then earlier, we had 39.3 kilometers, 40 kilometers. Then we had a very shallow one right up here, but I think that's at Pu'o'o'o. Pu'o'o'o, excuse me. And then we had a 2.4 at 42 kilometers in depth. I believe that was an actual earthquake. I think it was. I don't know. We'll check out the data in just a second. But look at how deep, guys. 40, 40.2. 37.5. Going down, going down. We did have a shallow one right in this location right here. But 42 kilometers, 39 kilometers, 36 kilometers, 32 kilometers. Notice for this one sequence right here, it seems to have gotten deeper. 
Usually they seem to get more shallow with time, and it is pretty much, I did talk, I had to leave the, uh, sorry guys, I've got so much stuff running through my head right now. I had to leave the Pacific Northwest uh, Earthquake Group on Facebook because I did present some theories on there, and they weren't happy with that, and they kind of got on my butt about it, and even if my theories are wrong, or what I say is wrong, you know, you shouldn't shut somebody down just because they have a difference of opinion, but I'm an amateur, and they're professionals, so they feel like they're more entitled to their opinion than me, but that doesn't even matter, I never even got mad at them, guys, it's not even that big of a deal, I'll just continue to do my stuff, but before that, I talked to Jackie, uh, oh, man, I always forget her last name, Auerbacher or something, please forgive me, that's probably wrong, Jackie something, I forget her last name, and it is pretty much unanimous that these spasmodic tremor events in this location right here at these depths are signaling mass magma transport along the mantle plume conduit, usually rising to feed magma into either Mauna Loa or the middle and lower east rift zones. But the thing is, is these ones seem to get deeper with time, which I thought was very, very intriguing. Usually they seem to get more shallow with time as the magma starts to rise up. The tremor itself is caused by the magma itself and the earthquakes that make up the spasmodic tremor. Because spasmodic tremor for Hawaii is mixed of earthquakes and tremor. I mean, sometimes there's more earthquakes than tremor and sometimes there's more tremor than earthquakes. But most of the time, the tremor is caused by magma. And the earthquakes are caused by the rock breaking away from that magma moving. But at these depths in this location, they are occurring within the mantle plume. So there is definitely a lot of magma coming into the system up here from Mauna Loa and the middle and lower east rift zones. Don't know exactly where that's headed though. Don't know where that's headed, but we did see some more spasmodic tremor events. Let's go to kinos.usgs.gov for the big island of Hawaii. Just real quick. And something I thought was very, very interesting, remember I said that the epicenters, and you can see here the epicenters are occurring right down here in this location, you would think that this station would be the closest, right? Right here, let me close this. PPLD, you would think that this would be the closest seismic station to the spasmodic tremor events, right? Well, it kind of is, you know, you can see the spasmodic tremor events, there's one right here, one right here, one right here, and another right here. But let's go to a different station, shall we? A, a station that's much farther away to TRAD. Notice how it looks much, much stronger. And then of the past hour, there has been another spasmodic tremor episode. Again, but we see four up here. There's one right here, one right here, one right here, and one right here. Remember, spasmodic tremor for Hawaii usually occurs between 20 kilometers and 55 kilometers in depth and they can last anywhere from 15 minutes all the way to over an hour and 10 minutes so they can last pretty long and be pretty strong guys we do see some other earthquakes in this area some deeper earthquakes are likely associated with the spasmodic tremor events don't know that for sure though but it's very interesting to note that trad notice this trad is much farther from the epicenter than ppld because the epicenter of the spasmodic tremors down here right well, TRD, uh, TRAD excuse me, seems to be showing these events, and especially some of the other stations on Mauna Loa seem to be showing these events much stronger than these stations that are near the actual epicenter. Isn't that very strange? I thought that was very strange. Maybe it's because the, most of the magma is heading into Mauna Loa? I'm not saying that for sure. But if that were true, if all the energy was being pushed through a tube, right, of course the energy would radiate away like ripples in a pond because it's a seismic event. But a lot of the energy would probably be focused on where the magma is heading. So really, maybe it's showing it stronger, maybe because it really is. And it really is showing it stronger over here, even though it's farther away from the epicenter. Do you guys kind of understand what I'm trying to say? I hope you do. Because I think I just almost confused myself. <laughs> but let's take a look at some of the recent seismic data from Seismic Station TRAD. Don't worry, I will be doing a blog post on today's spasmodic tremor events. It will probably be up by either tonight or tomorrow morning. But anyways, just keep a lookout for that. I will do that. But let's take a look at the seismic data for TRAD. Alright, here we are in the seismic program swarm with the most recent data stream from TRAD and the HV network. No location code given. Short period vertical. Notice we see these are not surface events, guys. If they were only showing on one station, yes, they would be. These are not. These are showing up all across the Big Island of Hawaii. But you guys probably already know that if you follow my work. Because I've talked about these events many, 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 many times before. So let's just take a look at some of them, shall we? Here, let me zoom out as much as I can. Now, there are some earthquakes in the midst that kind of 
make it scale down a little bit. But you can see it right here. Here, I got an idea. Let's just do manual scale. Let's do two, two, one, hundo. Okay, so you can see that event right there. Plain as day. Here's the spectrogram of it. Obvious spasmodic tremor event with mid-range frequency, so it cannot really be considered a low-frequency event. But that's a weak one. That's a weak one. Let's go to the next one that occurred. Here is a pretty, pretty strong one. Not the strongest I have ever seen, but pretty strong, guys. Pretty strong. Here, let me zoom out just a little bit more. Started at about 805 UTC and ended at about 859 UTC. So I'm going to say about 55 minutes. About 54 minutes, actually. 54 minutes of spasmodic tremor. Wow. Wow. That is very, very, very intriguing. And notice that this one seems to be more comprised of tremor than earthquakes. Other ones that you're about to see seem to be more comprised of earthquakes. This one, wow, okay, that went off the charts. Let's try to go to 300. Again, TRAD is showing it a little bit stronger, even though this station is much farther away. And look at that, it almost looks like a steamboat eruption, doesn't it? Obviously, the process is completely different. What's going on here is completely different than a steamboat eruption, but I'm just saying, just how it looks. Looks like a steamboat eruption. Kind of funny. Very intriguing. Okay, let's move forward, shall we? Let's go down to the next spasmodic tremor that occurred last night. I believe there are four in a row. Here's the other one. Started about 943 UTC, ended at about 1021 UTC. So maybe around, I'm going to say 38 minutes of spasmodic tremor for that one. There's that one right there. Don't worry. I, again, I will do an analysis page. Here's a very strong one right here. It started, I'm going to say, about uh, 1108 UTC and ended at about 1152 UTC. So a lot of these are lasting a longer than 30 minutes. Very intriguing, guys. Very intriguing. Again, here is the fourth one of last night. Typical spasmodic tremor event. And let's go to the last one. Just in the past hour, notice how this one seems to be more comprised of earthquakes. Notice that? But you can still see the tremor is still occurring. Again, this is what is considered spasmodic tremor. So it is very interesting, guys. Why is spasmodic tremor occurring again? We haven't seen it much at all for days, guys. I'm going to say maybe even a week and a half. I'm going to say maybe a week and a half. We have not seen these events, but they have made another resurgence. Uh, I don't know, guys. I think this is going to keep happening until eruptions happen. Because that's shown a lot of magmas coming up from the mantle, guys. A lot of it. And there are probably, and remember, this is just in the past hour, hour and a half as of 12.30 p.m. Pacific Time, June 1st, 2019. So more could be in store for today, and we do see other earthquakes throughout the day, other little tiny microquakes. For example, there's this one right here. Um, so we will keep an eye on this. Many, many earthquakes are occurring, mostly spasmodic tremor events, but still very intriguing, and there is spasmodic tremor. Woo, I love volcanic spasmodic tremor, guys, especially the ones from the mantle. Yeah, I think these are actually one of my favorite seismic events ever. Hope you guys have a great day. Going to do that blog post about these events tonight. Don't forget to check out the new things on my website. I uh, will be back soon. I'm going to be working on my monthly update. Hopefully the world stays somewhat calm so I can focus on that update because I have a limited amount of time to do this seismic stuff. I, I can't do everything, guys. I can't monitor everything. But I will try my best to get that out there as soon as possible. Again, on my website, if you go to the More drop-down menu, go to Videos Multimedia, and go to My Videos, I'm going to start posting all videos that I post on YouTube on there. So that's just in case if YouTube decides to get funky. You know what I mean? So God bless, guys. Hope you have a great day, and I will be back soon.